Hi everyone, um, so I'm just gonna give everybody a, another minute to filter in, but while we're waiting, um, if you could just let me know whether or not you can he hear me and see my screen, um, I'd really appreciate that. If you can hear me speaking and see me flip through the first couple of slides, um, just type a yes into the questions box of your GoToWebinar panel so that when one o'clock rolls around, um, I'll know that you all can uh, hear the presentation. All right, thank you. It looks like everybody can see in here. All right, guys, thank you so much for attending today. Um, today we're going to talk about strategy for the Art Van Charity Challenge. Um, and my name is Linda Gerhardt. I'm a senior community engagement manager here at Mighty Cause. I've been with uh, Mighty Cause since 2016. And in that time, I have helped put on a lot of giving days. So I'm happy to share my expertise with you and hopefully give you some helpful pointers as you get ready for the Art Van Charity Challenge. And just to give you a little bit of context about who Mighty Cause is and why we're hosting this webinar, um, we're the new technology partner for the Art Van Charity Challenge. Um, the challenge is hosted on the Mighty Cause platform this year, and we're also providing technical support to you as you gear up for the big day. So if you have any questions as you're setting up your profile and customizing your page, or if you need to know how to do something, or even if a donor has a question, our support team is here to help you. Um, you can email us at support at mightycause.com. Um, Mighty Cause is a fully functional nonprofit fundraising suite that nonprofit organizations use 365 days a year to raise money for their causes. Um, we've been around in since 20, 2006, um, so we're actually one of the first platforms to um, do peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and host giving days. And we've been doing this kind of thing for a very long time. So we're super excited to host the Art Van Charity Challenge and um, you know, host all of you on our platform. Here is a look at today's agenda. Um, we'll be reviewing some of the basics for those of you who may have missed our previous webinar or just need a little bit of a refresher. And then we're gonna move into giving event strategy so that you can start building your campaign. And then we're also gonna talk about the prizes that are available and share some prize strategy. Um, we'll do a question and answer session at the end of the presentation, um, just because we have a lot to go through today. Um, so if you have a question while I'm talking, just type that into the questions box of your go-to webinar panel. And if I haven't answered it in the presentation, um, I'll make sure that we have time to get to that at the end. All right, so with that housekeeping out of the way, um, we'll dive right into Art Van Charity Challenge basics. Um, Art Fan Charity Challenge is in its 11th year in 2019, and it is a three-week event that runs from September 9th to September 27th, so it's coming up very soon. Um, registration is closed at this point. Yesterday was actually the very last day to register, so hopefully everybody on this webinar got their registration in before the deadline. Um, the cool thing about this giving event is that there is a lot of prize money at stake, $250,000 to be exact, and we'll go into the prizes a little, a little bit later on. Um, this event specifically focuses on organizations that serve women, children, and provide human services. And that's why there's an application process for participating in this event. Once you've um, filled out and submitted your registration form and been accepted, you'll need to complete the items on your to-do list. Um, this list is located on the welcome screen on your nonprofit profile right under your metrics. You will actually be dropped right into your welcome screen when you click um, to view your nonprofit profile. Um, there are five basic items to complete. You need to add a background image to your page or just choose one from our gallery of stock background images. Upload your logo, which is really important because that represents your organization throughout the Art Van Charity Challenge site and on leaderboards. Um, add a story, um, also called a description, that tells visitors to your profile about your, what your nonprofit does. Um, and then build a thank you page to thank donors. Um, and then you can also set up EFT so you can get your disbursements through direct deposit. If you click the link in your to-do list, that's um, you can see on the slide there that some words are underlined. Those are actually 
hyperlinks, um, you'll actually be taken right to the spot on your profile where you can complete that task. So it's very easy to complete this list. Um, and it is really important to complete this list because as you're planning your campaign, these things are key to actually getting people to donate. When people go to your profile page and they see that it's not filled out, they're hesitant to donate to you. So filling out these items will make sure that your page represents your brand, looks like it belongs to your organization. Um, and before you do any sort of planning that gets you into the weeds of email and social media strategy, make sure that you complete these five items on your to-do list so that your page is ready to go and the easy wins are already out of the way. Um, if you need any assistance completing any of these tasks we're here to support you, you just email us at support at mightycause.com um, and we also have a pretty extensive support library so you can just visit that from our homepage um, if you have some questions want to watch a video walkthrough or anything along those lines we also recommend taking some time to get to know your dashboard. Um, your dashboard, which we like to call your Mighty Cause Manager, is basically your fundraising toolbox for the charity challenge. Um, your Mighty Cause Manager is the dashboard that appears on the left side of the screen when you're logged in and on your nonprofit's profile. You'll automatically land on your welcome screen or home screen, which we talked about, um, and that's where you'll find your to-do list, as well as some metrics for your nonprofit, so it gives you a quick snapshot of what's been happening since the last time you logged in, um, and news and update that are related to this giving event. Under profile, you can edit your page in the page editor. Um, you can adjust your page settings, and that's also where you can set your your financial goal for Art Band Charity Challenge and enable a progress bar to appear on your page. Um, you can also go to Live View to see how your page will look to visitors without logging um, out of your account. And that's important because as an administrator for your profile, you're going to see a few things that visitors won't. So just make sure that when you log, when you go to the live page view, it looks how you want um, and you aren't seeing anything there that you don't want to. Um, you can also, uh, below that on your dashboard, I should say, is um, your donation section, which is your one-stop shop for everything related to donation management and your checkout process for Art Van Charity Challenge. You're able to view and export a donations report. Um, and just as a tip, the view on the page is actually a little bit limited because we don't have the space to display all of the information we collect about each donation. So if you're looking for something in particular, you'll want to export the CSV that has all of the information you could need about each donation. Um, so make sure you export that if you're not seeing something that you need in the uh, report that's displayed on the page. Um, you can also view and manage your disbursements. So when you get your first deposit, you can check in to see what was included and balance your books. Um, you also have your donor experience section, um, which we're going to talk about more in a, a few slides, as well as matching grants, which we're also going to go into in great detail later on. Um, you can easily view and access any pages that are connected to your nonprofit from the campaign screen. So if you have a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, going on, you'll be able to see and access that from your campaign screen. And you can manage your nonprofit settings from your settings page. Your profile is the face of your nonprofit for the charity challenge. So you'll want to make sure that it looks good and represents your nonprofit well. Um, just so you know, this link, um, the URL in the browse in your browser on your profile page is actually the link you're going to share with your supporters when you ask them to donate to your organization for the charity challenge. Um, so to share your page, just copy and paste that URL. And in your social sharing buttons, um, specifically in the Twitter section, we have um, a shortened URL that you can share if you wanted to use a shorter link. Um, so as you're going through your to-do list, you'll want to customize your profile to match your brand. Um, you can change your theme color to match your, your organization's brand colors, um, upload your logo, upload media to your gallery to add some visual interest to your page, and your story or description is really the centerpiece of your page. In your store, you can put your mission statement, you can add photos, you can embed a campaign video. Um, just as a note on videos, you do need to upload them first to YouTube or Vimeo. Um, they both offer free basic accounts, um, but then you can embed it on your Mighty Cause page in your story. Um, this spot is really where you can go in depth about your work and make a strong appeal to donors. Um, tell them why your organization needs their, needs your, their support um, and spend a little time customizing this profile because the more work that you put into it, the better you will do during the charity challenge. Um, you can have the best campaign strategy in the world, but when your profile page looks 
empty, like you haven't shown it any love, um, people are less likely to donate. So you may actually lose out on some donations if you don't take the time to show your profile page a little bit of love. One of the really awesome things about Mighty Cause is that your nonprofit actually has quite a bit of control over the donation process, which is unique among fundraising platforms. Um, from our donor experience tool, you can opt into collecting the information you want from donors, like addresses and phone numbers. Um, you can also set up custom suggested, suggested donation amounts and add descriptions in to help tie those amounts to items or services that your nonprofit provides to strengthen your appeal to donate. Um, you're hitting donors with this information when they're deciding how much to give, so it's a really effective place to add in some additional messaging. Um, the donor experience is also where you'll go to set up your thank you page, um, which uses the same text editor as the story and as your story on your profile. Um, so you can add text, you can add links, um, you can embed a video or add an image, um, and you can also add a custom call to action button that tells donors where you'd like them to go next, which is pretty cool. So a good idea for that, for instance, would be asking them to sign up for your email list um, or directing them to your website or even just sending them back to your, your Mighty Cause profile. So there's a lot you can do in the donor experience tool to optimize your campaign and customize that checkout process for donors. And before we move on to the meat of this webinar and dive into campaign strategy, I just wanted to mention to you that you have access to a really great tool you can use as you get ready for the charity challenge, and that is the nonprofit toolkit. The toolkit, toolkit was created by Mighty Cause and the charity challenge team, and it has tips and tricks, FAQs, walkthroughs, um, timelines, and it also has templates that you can use um, to get together emails and social media posts. Um, or if you just need some inspiration and aren't sure what to put in an email, these are really great to check. Um, you'll also be able to find some recordings of past trainings if you missed them, um, and you can add logos and graphics um, to start tying your brand into the Art Band Charity Challenge brand. Um, so definitely, if you haven't already done so, check out the toolkit and, and refer back to it as you're planning your campaign because it's a really helpful resource. All right, so now we're gonna move into campaign strategy. So since the Charity Challenge is a multi-week event, the trick to making the most of the event for your nonprofit is going to be sustaining your fundraising momentum. And one great way to do that and to make sure that your campaign is on track is to set mini goals for your nonprofit to help generate buzz and build excitement. Um, one of the great things about the Charity Challenge is that they have weekly prizes um, and you can utilize those to help sustain your momentum and get people excited about helping you win extra money for your nonprofit. Profit. Um, we're going we're gonna to go over those prizes in detail a little bit later on, but basically you'll want to think of your overall fundraising goal and what you'll need to raise each week to get there. Um, now, typically the first and the last week are your, your strongest, so you may want to scale down um, your week a little bit in the second week because that's when there tends to be a little bit of a lull, but it, you can also use it to boost your other goals like um, social media engagement and you can boost that week as well if you wanted to add a matching grant during the second week to power past that lull and remain strong throughout the whole challenge. But mapping out your direction with mini goals is a great way to uh, communicate your goals to your followers and also to set short-term attainable goals um, so that you can make sure that you're your followers stay engaged and you have something continually to say to them. You can give them updates on the progress toward those goals and let them know what those goals mean for your nonprofit. Another thing you can do to get your campaign rolling is asking for seed donations. Um, these are donations from people in your nonprofit's inner circle. And they essentially break the ice with donors because for some reason, no one likes to be the first donor. Um, they just help get the ball rolling and they're called seed donations because they make the number of your donations grow. Um, people ask, to ask for a seed donation would be your board of directors, um, your staff, especially people who are director or C-suite level leaders at your organization, volunteers, or anyone else at your nonprofit who is highly engaged in your work. Um, these don't have to be huge donations. They certainly can be, but they can be smaller donations. Um, but just getting a little bit in the bank by tapping those people in your inner circle really does help move your campaign forward and get donations coming in. 
Um, a great strategy for driving donations on a giving day, one that's proven on the Mighty Cause platform, is securing a matching grant. Um, a matching grant is essentially a large donation that your nonprofit nonprofit leverages to bring in other smaller donations by offering it up as a match. For instance, if you had a partner or a major gift donor who was willing to give you $1,000, instead of just putting that money in the bank and calling it a day, you could use it as a matching grant. So the terms of the grant are totally up to you and the grantor, but let's say that there's an hourly prize available or, or something like that, or a daily prize, and you'd like to do whatever you can to drive donations so that you can win that prize. You can take that $1,000 donation and say to your followers, hey, between these hours, your donations will be matched up to $1,000, which basically allows people to double their donation. Um, people love a good deal and they love making their money go further. So a matching grant kind of operates like a donation BOGO sale. Um, you can do a lot within the Mighty Cause tool for matching grants, like setting a cap on a donation match, um, say, $200 so that someone doesn't come along and make a, a big donation and eat up your whole match. Um, so it's a really cool and complex little tool that allows you to do a lot with your matching grant. And on our platform, we've definitely seen that matching grants, especially during a giving event, can be a really powerful, powerful way to drive donations. So since a matching grant is ultimately just a large donation, you'll basically want to follow the same process you would as you what do you do when you secure major gifts? You prospect, cultivate, and ask. Um, people who you should consider prospects for a matching grants are board members, first and foremost. Um, sometimes an individual board member will be happy to provide a matching grant, but one thing you can also do is consider asking your board to work together to provide a match on behalf of the entire board. Um, another idea is if your board still has to pay its dues for this year, um, you could utilize their dues by turning them into a matching grant. Um, major gift donors who have given large donations to your nonprofit in the past are also really good prospects, and providing a matching grant can be a really fun way to liven up their donations so that instead of just writing a check or making a cash donation, they're helping your nonprofit grow and driving other people to donate. And you can also give the donor some extra recognition and love when you're promoting the match. So major gift donors, especially those who like a little shout out here and there, are even better matching grant prospects. Um, corporate sponsors and partners are also good prospects because it's a fun, proactive way for them to get involved in a very public way and draw attention to their philanthropy and their support of organizations in the community. Um, at this stage of the game, uh, you want to start making phone calls, sending emails, and starting to cultivate those prospects by letting them know what you're doing and seeing how warm they might be to the idea of getting involved by providing a matching grant. Um, definitely with the, the challenge starting so soon, um, existing people like board members and existing partners are a better bet than somebody that you're calling hold or haven't really worked with before um, but then you can start to ask them and if you have more than one match if you're able to drum up more than one person who's interested in giving you a matching grant you can actually enter multiple grants in so that over the course of the three weeks you're using matching grants to drive donations the whole time you can even run matching grants simultaneously. So if you had a huge grant um, for the duration of the challenge, you can still run smaller matching grants while you have that one running. So again, it's a really cool little tool that you can do a lot with to provide matching grants and allow people to make do their donations go further. So as I mentioned, the Matching Grants tool on Mighty Cause is a very versatile tool and you have a lot of options for how you structure your match. Um, not all matches have to be one-to-one -one matches where if someone gives that amount, the, that exact same amount is matched. So if you donate $50, $50 is matched. You can also do two-to-one, three-to-one, or you can match a percentage of each donation, which is a really great way to make a smaller match go further. And for instance, you could um, match it 50%, and that makes that amount of money go a little bit further. Um, the great thing about this matching tool is that it does the math for you. If I had to do this math, I would be lost, but our tool does it all for you. Um, and you just have to choose how you wanna structure your match. 
Um, you can also apply a match when a certain number of donations has been received. Um, so for instance, if you were trying to drive individual donations, you could say that if you get 100 donations within the space of an hour, you'll get an additional $1,000 for your nonprofit or however much your matching grant is for um, to help you actually drive donation volume and traffic as opposed to aiming for a dollar amount. So to make the most of your grant funding, you can combine grant funds into a larger match as well. So for instance, if you have a group of like 10 rock star volunteers who each can give $100 for a match, you could take their $100 and turn that into a grant since a $100 match is not going to go particularly far, but $1,000 can go quite far. Um, you can also post multiple grants as, at one time, as I mentioned, and you can also post them in sequence. So you can set a bunch of grants to fire one after another. Um, so I really don't wanna make this tool sound too complicated because it's actually very easy to use. It's meant to be something that anybody can get into and use, um, but you just have a lot of flexibility in how you structure your match, which gives you a lot of room to talk about how you can do this with various grantors. Um, now, if you get overwhelmed by the possibilities, just setting it up as a one-to-one -one match is the simplest and easiest thing you can possibly do. At the end of the day, a matching grant is essentially a marketing tool, a marketing tool. So in order to make the most of your matching grant, you'll need to promote it. So the first step is going to the matching grant tool on your um, Art Van Charity Challenge profile and adding it there. Um, it's under your donor experience. There are some marketing tools that are actually built into the platform to promote your matching grants, such as putting a sticker on your donate button when the grant is active, which you can sort of see on the slide there. Um, and you'll also have it listed at the bottom of your page, which you can see below the donate button. Um, and you'll also see some changes in your checkout process to reflect the matching grant. Um, but you'll want to add some information to your story too, especially if it's a very big match, um, and promote it on your social media channels when it becomes active, send out an email and so on, just to let your followers know about the match, because if they don't know about it, they can't take advantage of it. Um, countdowns also add urgency, so counting down and sharing your progress can be a really great way to get people excited and urge them to actually stop what they're doing, stop scrolling, and make their donation now. So, you know, if you have a match, that's fantastic. Fantastic, but you know it's like a tree falls in a forest no, does anybody hear it if you have a matching grit and you don't tell your followers does it actually exist the answer is really no you need to promote it so you can use the tool for that and you also want to use your regular channels like social media and email to let your followers know that it's available as well so moving on from matching grants, I wanted to talk a little bit about ambassadors. Um, ambassadors are people who are usually in your nonprofit's inner circle who can help boost your campaign. So that includes board members, volunteers, especially ones who are highly engaged, staff members, and so on. Um, utilizing amb ambassadors can help you break out of your list of existing supporters and engage new people, um, people that you wouldn't otherwise have access to. Um, an ambassador can help you in a few different ways. The first and easiest thing that they can do is share a link to your profile with their social circle and ask them to donate basically as a signal boost for your campaign. Um, if you have a board member, for instance, who's very well connected, this can be a really big boost. Um, and the other thing that they can do, which we're gonna talk about in the next few slides, is get involved in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, peer to peer fundraising is a fundraising technique where you basically deputize your supporters to fundraise on your behalf. Um, the Mighty Cause platform is actually built for peer to peer fundraising. That's what we started out doing and that's what we still do. Um, and it's really easy on our platform. So this can be a really great way to shake up your campaign and acquire new donors. Um, so if you wanted to try peer to peer fundraising, you would ask ambassadors to set up a fundraising page for your nonprofit on Mighty Cause for the charity challenge. Um, this may sound like a really big ask because you're asking something that's a little bit different for them, but it's often just a really fun way to engage your biggest supporters and allow them to tell their own story about your nonprofit, how they came to work with you, and why your work is important to them. Um, and this really doesn't distract or draw attention away from your campaign because they're operating alongside your campaign and they're reaching out to people they know personally for donations. In most cases, their friends and colleagues and family. And these are not people that your nonprofit has access to solicit typically. So your 
finding new people to engage. Um, so for people like your board, volunteers, staff, program alumni, this can be a really great way for them to get involved without just being asked to give money. Um, and it can make it a much more meaningful process and way to get involved for them. Um, definitely more meaningful than just making a donation in the standard way or sharing a link. Um, so it can actually be part of your stewarding process in that way of building and sustaining a relationship with that supporter. Um, we've also seen some some nonprofits get some great peer-to-peer -peer fundraising action by just inviting people on social media or sending them an email asking for help. Um, for younger people who have a big social network and are really comfortable online, but maybe don't individually have as much cash to give, this can be an excellent way for them to help out and make a meaningful contribution in a way that feels more manageable for them. Um, so I get asked a lot how to engage the millennial audience, and this is a really great way for them to get engaged. Um, they're used to a crowdfunding atmosphere that's something that is natural to them, so this can be a really great way to engage your younger supporters. To help make things easier for them, um, we recommend sharing some images, some talking points, some facts and some logos with them, or even offering to help them set up their pages, um, since at this point you should all be pretty comfortable on the platform, or at least will be soon, if you're not already. Um, nonprofits that utilize peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tend to raise more money during giving events, and it's definitely talking about worth talking about with your team how you can incorporate this into your campaign strategy. Um, definitely these don't take a lot of time to get going, so you do still have time to ask people to start a fundraiser for your nonprofit during the charity challenge. If you manage to generate a lot of interest in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, or if you've done it before for the charity challenge in past years, and you want to try something new, you can consider trying out team or event fundraising. Um, teams and events can be great for groups of people who want to fundraise together, like your board or companies that have a relationship with your nonprofit. Um, and just inspire some friendly competition to keep them motivated um, and you know get them engaged in raising money. The difference between teams and events is basically that an event allows individuals and groups of people to participate and fundraise together, while a team fundraiser is a group of individuals working together toward a collective fundraising goal. So a t an event is teams of people and individuals working together, and a team is just individuals working together. Um, now, the cool thing about using our teams and event, pr event products for a giving event is that there are so many tools built in that make managing it much easier. For instance, you can set up a template fundraiser that people can use to get set up more quickly and allows you to pre-fill some of the sections of their page. And you can email and um, co communicate with team and event members through the platform to keep them motivated, ask them if they need any help, and so on. Um, so these are just essentially more complex peer-to-peer -peer campaigns. And they can be a really great option for you if you've got a lot of people who are ready to fundraise for you, um, or if you've done peer-to-peer -peer before in the past and you really want to shake things up. So your email list is going to be one of your most important tools for the charity challenge because emails are a direct line to your supporters. Unlike social media, you don't have to worry about an algorithm getting in your way or preventing people from seeing what you send them because unless they're unsubscribed, and it'll end up right in their inbox, they'll see it, and they'll probably have a notification sent to them on their phone. So I just wanna talk a little bit about email strategy because that's gonna be really important for this giving event. Um, in general, you'll want to keep emails relatively short, simple, and skimmable. Uh, most people read their email on their phone these days, so they're not gonna sit back and read a novel. They wanna be able to skim it, understand what you're asking them or telling them, and get to the point. Um, people are much more likely to read emails that pertain directly to them, so we highly recommend segmenting your email list by sorting donors into a few key groups. Um, donors who have given a lot on a regular basis, one-time donors, people who've utilized your services but have never donated, program alumni, and so on. Um, you don't need to craft entirely new emails for each of these groups, but just tweak small things about these emails for each group to make it more personal and individualized to who these groups of people are and what kind of relationship they have with your nonprofit. Um, for instance, in an email to volunteers, you definitely want to acknowledge how much they already do for your nonprofit. And you obviously wouldn't want to send an email to a major gift donor who normally gives in, uh, you know, 
four or five digits, um, an email asking for a $25 donation, um, because that just says to them, I don't know who you are and I didn't look at who you were before I sent you this email. Um, so identify your key segments and figure out how to tailor your message to them. Um, when an email is tailored to who the recipient is and that relationship they have with your organization, they are much more likely to read it and take action on it. Um, how you segment depends on the program you're using, but most services like Constant Contact and MailChimp use a tagging system to segment groups of people on your email list. Um, one thing you'll need to pay close attention to is the timing of your emails, especially when you're talking about winning prizes. Um, so I would take the time to rec to schedule as much as you can beforehand, really sit down with the prizes and understand when you should be sending emails, um, and have a template email ready for things that you may need to send out on the fly, um, like you know, you may, it, reaching a milestone or something along those lines, you know, announcing that you've won a prize and so on. Um, as I mentioned before, most people read their email on their smartphones these days, so definitely make sure that you choose a mobile-friendly email template and test it out beforehand. Um, try it out on an iPhone, a Droid, and so on, and just make sure that it looks right, because if your email looks messed up, people are going to be put off by that. Um, and we also recommend doing a little bit of A-B testing, um, especially leading up, um, you know, as you go throughout the campaign or you're starting to, you know, drop hints about your campaign or starting to promote it, you can do a little bit of testing with subject lines um, because you'll want to make sure that people are driven to actually open your emails for the charity challenge. So try out different subject line formats. Um, you can try things like adding emojis see what works better so that when you're sending out these really critical emails, you'll have an idea of what tends to work for your email list. Um, A-B testing, if you're new to that term, is basically splitting an email up 50-50 and testing a variable. So let's say you're testing a button color or a subject line. Um, half your list gets email A with one subject line and half get email B that has another subject line you're testing, and whichever email gets the most opens wins. Um, for the button color or placement, the email with the most clicks would win, since obviously the object of a button is to click it and go to a link. Um, you just want to be careful about testing too much and throwing too many variables in there, because then it's really hard to say why something won the test or performed better, because you have so many variables. Um, lastly, your CTAs should be clear and action oriented. So give now, donate now, help us today. Um, a lot of nonprofits tend to default to more passive CTAs like thanks for donating or please contribute. And those just aren't as effective. You want to be really clear with what you want the person getting the email to do and add some urgency so that they're actually motivated to click. So now we're going to move on to social media strategy. Um, for a high stakes event where you have a lot going on, um, we really recommend staying in your comfort zone and going where your audience is. And what I mean by that is that if you have never logged into TikTok before in your whole life, you don't want to try TikTok out for the charity challenge. That doesn't make sense. That's not a great use of your time. Um, conversely, if you have a thousand followers on your Facebook page, but only have a handful on Instagram, then you should probably spend much more time on Facebook than Instagram. Now that doesn't mean that you have to ignore those followers because those followers are important on Instagram, but you want to go where your audience is and where you have the biggest likelihood of getting people to click through and donate to your campaign. So stay in your lane and put your efforts into the platform where you're most likely going to get a return on your efforts. Um, I definitely recommend scheduling any posts you can ahead of time just to save yourself some trouble during the challenge and leading up to it. So get your key content scheduled with Facebook's publishing tools or Creator Studio. Go into TweetDeck and schedule your tweets and save any live posting for stuff that needs to be done live, like thanking a big donor, um, updates on your progress, leaderboard updates, and announcements about winning prizes. Um, so to that end, you'll probably also want to assign a person to monitor your social media so that you can quickly respond to comments and tweets um, and really interact with your followers since that it's in, that's important on social media. And inter interaction can also help you in terms of algorithms. Um, since most platforms do show a priority to posts that have lots of engagement. So the more engagement you get, that means clicks, comments, and so on. Um, that is, means that more people are going to likely see your post in their feed. 
Um, we do recommend budgeting a little bit of money if you're able to boost some of your key posts or promote some tweets. Um, and on social media, $20 for an ad can actually go a really long way. Um, you'll just wanna make sure that your ad is targeted properly. And if you aren't sure how to target an ad, you can always default to targeting people who like your page or already follow you. That's a really safe bet. Um, in terms of the type of content that does well on social media, it depends a little bit on the platform, but in general, photos and videos do really well. Um, we definitely recommend staying away from YouTube videos on Facebook. Um, you'll want to upload your video directly to the platform that's called Native Video because YouTube and Facebook are competitors, so they don't like showing YouTube videos to people. Um, so download or upload things directly into the platform whenever possible. And you may want to consider doing something a little bit out of the box, like a Facebook Live video or watch part party or, you know, for a campaign video to help generate some buzz while you're delivering that algorithm friendly content. And finally, when you're planning your campaign, you don't want to stop when the event stops. You want to consider follow up. Um, when you're planning your content, you'll also want a plan to thank your donors. So things like making a video or um, taking a photo of your staff, those can be really great effective ways to follow up. Um, be sure to talk about the impact of the funds you raise and close the loop on your campaign. So that means if you were fundraising for something specific, like a new piece of equipment or improvements to your, your building or something along those lines, you'll want to send progress emails. If, if somebody is donating to a campaign to help you build a new uh, location, and they never hear about it again, they never hear about you breaking ground on a new location, they're not going to donate to you again. So you need to close the loop and tie up any open ends from your campaign. Um, you'll also want to make sure you've got an onboarding plan in place for new donors so that they come back and donate again. Um, if you collect addresses, mailing them a welcome packet or a card can be a great way to get them onboarded. And you can also create an automated email journey where they can get more information about what you do and why it's important to support your work. Um, and you just wanna basically in incorporate these people into your year round stewarding plan. Um, you've definitely got end of year coming up very soon. Um, so include these people in your end of year fundraising plans too. If you're doing Giving Tuesday, there are people you'll wanna hit again on Giving Tuesday. So just you know, steward them, don't just thank them once and then let them go. Follow up with them, get them involved and ingratiated in your nonprofit. All right, so now we're gonna move into talking about all the awesome prizes that the Art Van Charity Challenge has to offer and how you can aim to win them. So Art Van Charity Challenge is offering prize grants to the top 10 positions on the leaderboard, which gives a lot of nonprofits a chance to win. Um, the leaderboards will be on the live event site. So as soon as the charity challenge begins, you'll see them on the event site and nonprofits are ranked here by the dollars they have raised. So the people, the organizations who raise the most amount of money are at the top and then it goes down from there. Now it's important to mention that only online donations made through the Mighty Cause platform count for leaderboard totals. So this is a big reason why you wanna push your donors to give online. Um, you can certainly record a check that a donor gives you. Um, it just won't be reflected in your leaderboard totals. And the reason for that is that we wanna be fair and we cannot verify offline donations that happen off of our platform. So, you know, that creates an opportunity for somebody to offer, uh, you know, put a big offline donation in that we can't verify. So because we, we want to be fair and make sure that, you know, all everything's on the level, we just only count online donations when we're talking about leaderboards, especially when there's prizes attached. Um, the leaderboard will, will, will reflect your cumulative total from the time the challenge begins on September 9th. So it's a running total of everything you've raised online. And here, um, you're just engaging in some friendly competition to get those prizes. So here's a breakdown of all the prizes that are available. Up at the top, the number one position, um, you get a $100,000 prize grant, which is huge. And then $50,000 for second place, $25,000 for third place, and so on. Um, the top 10 spots get a prize, so there's lots of opportunity to win. 
the leaderboards provide some of the biggest uh, prizes available in the charity challenge and the key to winning them is getting your donors invested in helping you climb the leaderboard um, so keep tabs on your position on the leaderboard and keep your donors and supporters updated on where you are and continually emphasize how much is at stake how much uh, would one hundred thousand dollars do for your charity? What would that help you achieve? Um, tie that back into your overall messaging about what you do and why you do it to really get people excited and invested about helping you win that prize money. Another trick is just concentrating on sustaining momentum, keeping the fundraising going, and starting and finishing strong. Um, the more you bring in donations, the more you engage donors on a regular basis, the better you will do on the leaderboard. So um, really the, the trick to leaderboard strategy is just to keep Keep it going, keep people invested, and tie it back into your overall messaging about what your nonprofit does. Um, Art Fan Charity Challenges, Challenge also has a huge variety of bonus prizes that you can compete to win as well. Um, the Kickoff Challenge, um, it's a hundred thousand. I mean, sorry, it's a thousand dollars total, um, and there's two challenges worth two prizes worth $500 each. They're split by large and small organizations. Um, and basically it's $500 for the organization that raises the most amount of money in the first 24 hours of the campaign. So again, starting strong, you'll have the opportunity to win an extra prize. So when the donations open on September 9th, go hard and aim to win this this um, bonus challenge. Um, you also have a week one challenge, um, which is two prizes worth $1,000 each, split up by large and small organizations. Um, and that will, um, that will cover the week of September 9th to the 15th. So that's again, ranked by most dollars raised. Week two as well, um, you have the chance to win $1,000 for your organization, split by large and small organizations so that smaller organizations are not up against nonprofits that have infinitely more resources than they do. So it's a fair competition. Um, and basically this um, is a great time to reinforce that mini goal that you set for these weeks. Um, how much did you wanna raise? You know, encourage your supporters to help you get there so that you have a chance of winning this, this bonus prize for your nonprofit. Um, there's also a challenge for the third week um, that's worth the same amount, two prizes worth $1,000 each, split by large and small nonprofits. Um, there's a final day challenge um, worth $1,000, um, $500, uh, $500 to two organizations, one large, one small, and it's the most amount that is raised within the final 24 hours of the event. So that's a really great way to get your organization across the finish line, let them know where you are, how much you need to raise, um, and really get them amped to help you cross that finish line and, and finish strong. Um, and then finally, there's a um, meet your match challenge, which is kind of an off the, it, it, it's not really a, um, it's a different kind of challenge. So for every organization that has a match of $500 or more, um, you'll be entered in to uh, win three prizes worth $1,000 each. So um, that's a really great incentive to get a matching grant. So start making those calls, sending those emails, setting up those meetings, um, because a matching grant of $500 can do a lot for your organization. And then it also puts, puts you in the running to win more money through this bonus challenge. Um, the most unique donors prize um, in each category, which is women, children, human services, the organization that has the most unique donors during the full length of the campaign will win an additional $1,000. So there's $3,000 at stake here, um, and everybody in every category has a chance to win. Um, and this is actually kind of interesting because if you're a nonprofit that maybe doesn't have don as many donors that give in higher amounts, but you have a lot of donors who give in smaller amounts, this can be a really big chance for you to win some additional money for your nonprofit. Um, it's also a really creative way to use a matching grant. Um, you do have the ability to provide a matching grant for a number of donors that you get. So each individual is counted rather than a, a monetary amount. So that's something you can do through the matching grants tool to really target winning this prize. Um, and then finally, there's a social media contest, which is worth $1,000. Um, the organization that gets the most retweets on a single tweet promoting the campaign wins a $1,000 prize. So that works out for you because you have the chance to win um, some additional money for your nonprofit 
and engage people on social media. Um, these prizes are all listed on the Art Van Charity Challenge site. Um, just go to prizes and guidelines and you'll be able to see a list of all of these there. So as you're planning, go through this list and see which prizes you want to try to target and schedule your emails like at the beginning of each week since there's a new prize available that would be a great time to send an email and post on social media and get people excited about the week ahead and helping you win that next prize all right so that's everything i have for this presentation i know that was a lot um, but if you have a question for me um, just go ahead and type that into the questions box of your go to webinar panel and i will Go ahead and uh, try to answer what we've already got. Okay, can you clarify the difference between the donation page and a fundraiser? Should we create a fundraiser for this event or simply share our Mighty Cause page for people to donate to? That's a really great question. Um, you can do either, so either is okay. If you wanna use your nonprofit profile page, you can do that. So that's just your general page. Um, for your nonprofit where you would put your mission statement, you can put a, a fundraising goal and a progress bar on that page and use that for fundraising. Um, a fundraiser, when I'm talking about you know, creating a fundraiser, that is a separate page that is attached to your nonprofit. Um, so that would be a, you know, a page that you set up um, separately. So if you wanted to create one specifically for the Art Van Charity Challenge, you could do that. Um, that also, that umbrella of fundraiser, I'm making air quotes with my hands, um, includes peer-to-peer -peer pages as well. Um, so it's really up to you and what works best for you. Um, if you have like a really specific thing you're fundraising for, sometimes um, the fundraiser, fundraiser, fundraiser pages are just set up a little bit better um, for that kind of messaging because your profile is something you can use year round. Um, either works, it really just comes down to what you feel most comfortable with um, and what has the tools you want to use the most. Um, so there's really no wrong or right way. Um, the easiest, simplest thing you can do is to use your profile page um, to collect donations. Um, if you wanted to get more specific and have you know, a specific fundraising page just for the Art Van Charity Challenge, you can, you can set up a fundraiser for your nonprofit. All of the money goes to the same place. Um, it just looks a little bit different and has slightly different tools there. So that's um, really the big difference between them. The fundraiser page is your year round evergreen page that you can use outside of the Art Van Charity Challenge. And a fundraiser has a time limit. So after a page, after a certain time, that page is no longer being used as your main page. So that's um, really the big difference is one has a time limit and one does not. Um, and it, there's, a, there's slightly different storytelling tools there. The fundraiser page is a little bit more simple um, in terms of its appearance. You also have a pie chart you can use there. So if you had a goal of you know, $5,000, you could break down how you want to use that $5,000 at your nonprofit. So that's really the main difference, um, but just do whatever feels best for your nonprofit. There's no right or wrong way to do it. And if you wanna keep it simple, just use your nonprofit profile. All right, do matching grants need to be made online as well? That's a really great question. So you don't have to collect them online if you have a grantor and they're more comfortable cutting you a check for their matching grant, then you can do that. There, it's not a requirement that they process it online. The only caveat to that is that since we're only able to include um, online donations in leaderboard totals, the amount of that matching grant will not help you in the leaderboards if it's made offline. So certainly I would encourage you to talk to your grantor and explain why it's beneficial to your nonprofit to make that donation online once the grant is fulfilled, but it's not a requirement. You don't have to do it that way. It's down to what is best for you and your grantor, um, but if you can get them to make it online, that is a huge help to you because that's a big donation that you can see reflected in the leaderboard and it also helps you win prizes um, so that's really the big difference it's definitely good if you can do that but it's not required um, if they want to write a check they can absolutely write a check 
All right. Um, if we get a matching grant that is sent directly to us, can we count it in the match challenge or the challenge total? So yeah, that's kind of an extension of the previous question. Um, it'll be counted in your overall amount raised on your nonprofit's profile, but it won't be in the leaderboard. So that's the difference. Um, you really want to try to encourage them to make it online if at all possible, but it's not required. The benefit is obviously that you get to see that amount in your leaderboard total and it helps you win prizes. Um, otherwise, you're just using it to drive donations, which is also helpful. So talk to your grantor, encourage them to make it online. But if they just aren't comfortable with that, we understand. So you can just enter it in and collect the money via check or however they choose to uh, provide it for you. Um, where do you adjust the type of match to 25 donations this week unlocks a $1,000 match type one. So that's a really specific question. We do have a support article that goes in deep about matching grants. Um, there's a few different options there. Um, sometimes you can't get quite as specific as you want. Um, there's a cumulative match total, um, I think is what it's called, tool, which is basically you can say when we get to this number of donors, um, then the match is fulfilled and you can set an end date for that. There's no specific setting for that particular kind of match, I don't think, but you can also contact our support team and they can teach you how you can sort of make that that kind of match circumstance work with our tool because you can do it, um, but it's a little bit easier if you have somebody who's showing you on the tool, um, but you can certainly make that work, but basically you can do it um, by percentage, you can do it one to one, two to one, three to one, and you can also say when we get this number of individual donors, that's each individual number of people who are donating to your nonprofit, the match is fulfilled rather than looking at a monetary amount. Um, so definitely get into that tool and play around with it. Um, if you start a matching grant before the event, it's totally okay to just close that manually um, if you want to test it out. But you can also contact support at mightycause.com if you have a super specific question about something you want to do with a match that you can't quite figure out. There's usually a way we can make it work, but sometimes it just takes a little bit of um, talking through. Um, where will we see the leaderboard so we can update our donors as to our position? Yeah, so you'll actually see that on September 9th when the site goes into live mode. Right now it's in the pre-event site mode, so you're seeing information about the charity challenge there. When September 9th rolls around and it switches over to live, you'll see the leaderboards there and you can actually search them. So if you don't see yourself in like the top 10, if you're a little bit further down, just search for your nonprofit's name. There's a little search icon, a little magnifying glass that you can use to search for yourself and find out where you are. So if you don't see yourself there immediately, don't panic. You might just be a little bit past the cutoff point and have to expand it, but use that search tool to find yourself. Um, but starting September 9th, you'll be able to see that on um, the live event site. All right, let's see. How many nonprofits are in the challenge? Um, so I'm not sure offhand. Um, <laughs> there's uh, quite a few. So, um, you know, th it, there was an application process. So there is some, um, you know, requirements that everybody has to meet. So I'm not sure at this point, these, um, uh, somebody else at the at Mighty Cause is managing the site itself. Um, but yeah, you'll be able to see that when the site goes live. Let's see. Social media contest is only on Twitter. Um, yeah, I think that this particular contest is on Twitter just because it's easier for them to track who, um, you know, who's getting the most retweets. Facebook can make that a little bit trickier to track, whereas you can just set up a dashboard in Twitter and see, you know, who's using that hashtag and how many retweets they're getting. Um, so I think that's why that decision was made. Um, it's a great time to maybe start using Twitter, you know, get on your Facebook page and say, hey, if you use Twitter, we could use your help here. You know, here's our account and get them to follow you there as well so that they can help you win that prize. Um, but yeah, they had to choose one or the other, I think, because, you know, everybody has their favorite social media platform, but this one just uh, made the most sense for that prize. But get your Facebook followers, you know, to follow you on Twitter as well. Um, build a following there. Um, there's still plenty of time. Um, so just get them over to Twitter and tell them that, you know, if they help retweet you, that you can help you, they can help you win a prize. Um, what are the fees many donors ask us? That is in the FAQs. 
Um, so I'd have to check. Um, I'm not sure offhand. Um, I can, it's, but it's in the FAQs. Um, and donors do have an op opportunity to cover fees for you. Um, so check the FAQs. They're not high. I think I, I'd have to check offhand to see what the fees are, but that information is in the FAQs. <clears throat> Will Artvan and or Mighty Cause be promoting and driving traffic to the overall challenge? Um, so Artvan, I think, is doing the bulk of the work there just because um, it is a localized event, so it's targeting some specific locations, whereas Mighty Cause is um, sort of a nationwide company, um, so we're not able to do as much targeting. Um, but yeah, you know, we'll be helping as much as we can to drive traffic to the page. Um, but really, when it comes to um, driving traffic on a giving event, it's your donors and your support supporters and people who follow your work that are going to be most interested. Um, we don't email donors, um, aside from transactional emails on Mighty Cause, um, because, you know, those donors are yours. So they're your nonprofit's donors. Um, um, and we don't contact them or solicit donations from them for any purpose. Um, so we did do a little bit of work to get organizations signed up for the charity challenge, um, but we unfortunately, we just don't email donors as a policy because our belief is that those donors belong to you. Um, and so we don't want to email them to ask them to donate to other organizations or giving events. Um, so that's our policy, um, but there will be some work on our end and on um, art vans and to get traffic to the actual site. But when it comes to donations, just know that your followers are gonna be the greatest driver of success for you. So make a plan to reach out to your donors as much as you can. All right, so the leaderboard will include everything, the main fundraiser page, specific fundraiser pages, team totals, and so on. Yes. So as long as the page is connected to your nonprofit um, and your nonprofit profile is connected to your EIN. So when somebody builds a fundraiser page or they build a team page or whatever they choose to build, as long as that's connected to your nonprofit, it is included in those leaderboard totals. So you don't have to worry about that if you don't see something. Sometimes people can create a page without connecting it properly. You can email support and let us know and we'll link it up. But you know, it's pretty hard to do that. Um, but you, yeah, everything that is happening on the platform during the challenge will show up in the leaderboard. Um, obviously just online will count toward the leaderboard, but everything will be automatically linked up. So if your nonprofit is participating, everything connected to your nonprofit on the Mighty Cause platform will be counted in the leaderboards. Um, are donor covered fees tax deductible for the donor since Mighty Cause is a nonprofit? Yes, it's fully tax deductible for them. So yeah, the, it, there's nothing that they can't deduct from their, their taxes if they choose to. They'll get a receipt from us um, that gives them all the information that they need to deduct it from their taxes, and that includes the full amount. So there's nothing, there's no tricky um, legal jargon about you can only deduct this amount of your donation. If they cover fees for you, the whole thing is tax deductible for them. So that's a really great reminder when you're contacting them. Remind them that they can cover fees for you so that your nonprofit sees more of their donation. And also let them know that the full amount, if they cover fees, is also tax deductible. So that's something that they can get back when they file their taxes. All right, so I think that is it for questions. Um, I'm sorry there were a few I didn't know the answers to, but you can always check the FAQ on the Art Van Charity Challenge website um, to find the answers to those. Everything is laid out as transparently as we possibly could. So if you have any questions that I wasn't quite able to answer, definitely check out the FAQs and, and peruse that information there. Um, and I think that's it, but if you have any questions, anything specific um, to your nonprofit or using our platform that you wanna ask, just contact us at support. We have a really great support staff, um, support at mightycause.com. We're happy to hop on the phone with you. Um, so just let us know if you're having any issues or any questions and we will help you out. Thank you guys so much for all of your time today um, and happy fundraising. Good luck during the Art Van Charity Challenge.